Hey folks, tonight uh, we're going to take a look at this old magazine that I got from the used bookstore. It's called American Indian Art. American Indian Art Magazine. And this is from, this issue is from spring 1988. Now I looked into this a little bit. I don't couldn't really get completely definitive info, but my understanding is this magazine started in 1975 and went all the way to 2015 under this name American Indian Art, and they published uh, four episodes a year. <laughs> Sorry, four uh, magazines, four issues a year. Uh, and it looks like in 2016, they changed their name to uh, Native American Art. Um, and, but it looks to be, and they, and they redid their logo and such, but it looks to be roughly a similar magazine. But for all those years, it was called American Indian Art. And as I note, this one is 35 years old, this magazine. And I thought it was cool because it does have some cool artifacts and uh, artwork. So it's got artifacts, period artifacts, as well as, um, you know, artwork produced today or, well, in this case, 35 years ago, but by modern artists, uh, by modern, modern uh, Native American artists. And this magazine's kind of falling apart, so I think it'll be okay, but we're going to be a little careful. So a lot of the magazine is kind of advertisements for galleries, but um, that little guy. Now this is pretty cool though. You can see this is a rainbow web fetish neckwear. Where I guess these little items are called fetishes. And they're carved. And uh, I will give a little warning. Um, I, some of the magazines in here are a little scary. Um, some of the masks, I'm sorry. Um, are a little scary, um, so just kind of be warned about that. See, there's a lot of it is ads for these galleries and auction houses. And this item is pretty pretty cool. It's a, I may be pronouncing a lot of these names incorrectly, so forgive me. It's a hunku hunk papa. Sorry, Hunk Papa Sioux Horse Dance Stick. And it says it sold for 27500 at an auction in 1987. You can see some jewelry there. More jewelry, pottery. This acrylic on canvas art, Taos Drum Talk. More galleries. Get some things out of my way. This one says it's a teak nos pos blanket. Tech teak nos pos? Not sure. You know, I was kind of thinking all these galleries and art houses and whatnot would were in you know like the Southwest, like this one Santa Fe. But I was looking through here, and I guess you know they're all over the 
country, which of course makes sense since there's Native Americans all over the country. But a lot of these kind of galleries, I always think of the Southwest, but it's like Minnesota and that was New Mexico, but, but yeah, they're all over the place. these galleries and try to get up to where um, you know, some of the actual stories and artwork are. So this was a, looks like a big article. Yeah, this magazine's starting to fall apart. We'll see if it gets through. Son of a star, good bird and buffalo bird woman, photographed by Gilbert Wilson, 1906. Good Bird invited Wilson to take a picture of his parents shortly after Wilson first arrived on the reservation in 1906. They posed in front of Good Bird's home at, in, 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 at Independence. Son of a star, Buffalo Bird woman's Mandan husband wore traditional clothing for the photograph. His honor marks are painted on his leggings. Buffalo Bird Woman wore a dance dress decorated with ribbon applique. Wilson noted that this was the first photograph the old people had ever taken. That was courtesy of the Minnesota Historical Society. This one is this basket. It says, Basket, Hidatsa, probably made by Buffalo Bird Woman, bought by Gilbert Wilson, pre-1918. Willow wood frame dyed in undyed willow and box elder bark strips. Rawhide tumpling. Buffalo bird woman was an expert basket maker and taught her techniques to Gilbert Wilson's brother, Frederick. Like many other crafts, basket making could only be passed on by purchase. Basket makers would not let others see how they worked, Buffalo Bird Woman explained. So these, these um, tribes, I remember reading about um, the, this Mandan tribe, as well as this Hidatsa tribe, interacted with... Uh, Lewis and Clark, I remember reading about that. Uh, Lewis and Clark encountered those tribes um, when he was heading, when, they, when their company was heading up the Missouri, Missouri River. Oh, it's just falling apart. Sorry, guys. Let's see how this works out. So this photo, Gilbert Wilson... 1913, Wilson stayed at Independence for several weeks every summer for 12 years. He described his work as an effort to let the informant interpret her experience in her own way. He added, We have abundance of material upon Indian culture telling us merely what white men think of the subjects treated. Here he posed to illustrate how a man carried home a nest of grouse in his robe. This one is a pipe bag, Hidatsa, bought by Gilbert Wilson from Snow, from Sioux Woman, Goodbird's wife, in 1909. This tanned hide bag, decorated in dyed porcupine quill work, demonstrates the brilliant shades favored by many Hidatsa and other plains craft workers. The distinctive Hidatsa plated quill work technique around the bag's border. The 
these are leggings. Leggings, Mandan. Only men who had won honor marks were permitted to paint them on clothing and other objects. If a man had not won the kind of marks he wanted on this clothes, he hired others to paint them. These tanned hide leggings decorated with dyed quill work are an example. They were made by leader for her husband, Lance Owner, who asked Wolf Ghost a Hidatsa to decorate the leggings on the left and Wounded Face a Mandan to paint the one on the right. Lance Owner explained that the marks referred to identical war honors, but the left hand symbols were Hidatsa and the right Mandan. He and his wife debated whether Wolf Ghost had put too much on his legging, since all the marks referred to the same honor. Headdress, Hidatsa. The close personal re relationship between Gilbert Wilson and the Hidatsa family he worked with is demonstrated by this headdress. Wolf Chief made it as a gift for Wilson's son, Sam, who was born during the years the two men worked together. It is a style used in turn of the century powwows, made from a gray felt cap decorated with loom woven glass beads silk ribbons, ermine fur, stri fur strips, dyed feathers, bison horn, horse hair, and red wool trail with eagle feathers. Wolf Chief, Wolf Chief told Wilson that in old times, eagle feather bonnets like, like it were not worn in dances except by those who had wo worn them in war. A war bonnet was not itself an honor mark, he said, but only very brave men would wear it because all the enemies would be eager to kill the wearer so that they could afterwards say, I struck a good enemy. He wore an eagle tail cap. These are moccasins. Hidatsa style porcupine quill work. A 1926 photograph shows buffalo bird woman wearing moccasins almost identical to these. She described to Wilson the Hidatsa techniques of moccasin making, which included both soft and hard sole styles. Bright colors. This one's a woman's bag. Northern Plains Hidatsa style. Pre 1918, the Hidatsa made painted per flesh like uh, bags like this, but also got them in trade from other tribes. Wolf Chief described this distinctive envelope shaped style of par flesh as a woman's as a woman's bag used for storing tools and toiletries. However. He used one like it on an eagle hunt for carrying game and his lunch. Pretty cool colors. Here's a bow, bow case, and quiver. Bow made for wolf chief. Bow case. Wilson photographed the entire process of making this bow and case from cutting the wood and hide to final use. Oops, that just came totally loose. <laughs> Wolf Chief explained the advantages of the asymmetrical Hidatsa bow, the upper end of which was sh shaved thinner than the lower end to secure steadier and straighter flight. For the arrow. 
Bows could be made of ash, plum, cedar, elm, or like this one, choke cherry wood. The bow is signed HWC for Henry Wolfchief in green paint. The case is decorated with panels of used of, of seed beads. It was made to be worn horizontally across the back with the strap passing over both shoulders and across the chest until it was ready for use. When it was slipped under one arm, a rawhide bow guard and extra bowstring are attached. Grass Dancer Painted by Goodbird, 1914 Pencil and watercolor on paper Goodbird was a talented though untrained artist. He made this painting to illustrate the regalia of an officer in the grass dance, a ceremony that was purchased by the Hidatsa and Mandan from the Sioux in the 1870s. Both Goodbird and Wolfchief were members of the grass dance. Goodbird told of playing hooky from the mission school in order to attend the ceremonies. And here's kind of a scary mask. It says, Shaman's headdress. Tingit. Hoot Snoo Woo, early 19th century wood, possibly maple. S human hair, swan skin, eagle feathers, antler, fox tail, buckskin. Some of these are a little more scary. This one is a mountain sheep. Horn bowl here. This one is a groundhog mask. Stingit. Stickine. Alderwood hair buckskin. This mask appears in two old photographs of the clan treasures taken during the reign of Chief shakes the sixth probably in the 1880s and then this one's a grizzly bear mask it's a tingit stickine early 19th century this mask is perhaps the most important treasure of the nayayi chief shakes clan of the stickine wolf fat fratry it is made of the raw skin of a bear's head, stretched on an armature of wood with iron eyes, opercula and bear canine teeth, copper lips, and ears made in the form of human, humanoid bear's faces worked in repose on copper sheet with abalone shell inlay for the eyes and teeth. This one is an elk antler human figure. Coast Salish, Suchia Island. Four other figures very similar to this one have been found, three from within a 35-mile radius of Suchia Island and one in British Columbia. This one is a mask. It's a Shamshian Nishaga. Wood, human hair. This is probably a Naknok mask, a mask representing a hereditary spirit name. When it was received from the water's collection, it was almost entirely covered with white paint. After a long period of consideration, this overpainting was carefully removed to reveal the original colors. Here's a whaling canoe. Mak 
America, late 19th century, alderwood mussel shell bone string. The whaling canoe model is complete with crew, harpoon, model seal skin, floats, and even the whale collected by James G. Swan for the Washington World's Fair Commission. Received 1893. Get these gloves. They're pretty cool. From New Zealand, or from a museum in New Zealand anyway. North American Indian Collection. Gloves, animal hide, thread, embroidery, documented as having been worn by Chief Moses and purchased from him in 1898 in North Yakima. So I assume that's Yakima, Washington, Washington State. So they have a North American Indian collection in New Zealand. Museum. Pestles and Mortar, Northwest America. And then this one is a woman's dress. Animal Hide and Beads, 1835 to 1840. Here we have a fan, feathers, fabric, beads, documented as having belonged to Chief Moses and purchased from him in 1895 in North Yakima. There are reservations in that part of Washington State. This one says California basketry collected by G. Nicholson and C. Hartman. A trinket basket with lid. I guess that's this guy. And then this one is a shaman's headdress made from wood, animal hide, down, feathers, pigment. We have moccasins, made animal, animal hide beads, late 19th century, documented as having belonged to Chief Moses' daughter. And this one's a coiled basket with imbricated decoration, late 19th century. And this is jewelry produced in, at this time of this magazine, roughly, so 1988. Native American artists produced these pieces. More mosaic jewelry. Bracelet. There's more bracelets. And a necklace with a pendant. This artist, Sippy Crazy Horse, or Chippy, probably Sippy, Kippy, probably, probably Sippy, not sure. He 
makes these kind this kind of art. He's got bracelets. An eye design. Here he's got a concha belt and belt buckles. He calls the buckle design a handlebar mustache design. Style cross necklace in silver by that same crazy horse uh, artist. Here's Mike Bird, another artist. Just a necklace. Some more silver jewelry by Mike Bird bracelets. Ring. Here's some pins. And I think that's pretty much the end of the kind of cool art photos. A lot of the rest of it is just more ads for uh, more galleries. Get some artwork here. Mostly just ads for galleries. This artwork here says Crow Mother, Mother of All Kachinas. Acrylic on sand textile. see some more examples from what some of these different galleries have. There's a pipe, another piece of art there. Looks like a painting. It was the Tulsa Indian Arts Festival in 1988 with the Buffalo Dancer. Bowls. Look at that, there's a Comanche. Here's a Plains Cree quilled knife case and dagger circa 1820. And then this is says Comanche. Buckskin, circa 1870. Necklace of Ivory and Gold by Dwayne Mactima. Says a Mandan cradle cover, circa 1880, sinew buffalo hide. And this says sand paintings. Hmm. It's pretty cool. you found this little video, this flip through of this old magazine called American Indian Art Magazine from Spring 1988. Hope you found it relaxing. If you like the video, please uh, click the like button. It helps me out. Subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, thanks a lot. And uh, mostly thanks for watching. And have a good night.